Once you face the truth of your bank account and the situation that you're in, that's how you move forward. That's when you know you can take an actionable plan or a step forward to where you want to go. I've always imagined myself as that YouTuber who is talking in front of the camera and it was something that I was afraid to start because I knew that people would make fun of me. And honestly, who cares if they do? It's your life. Your life should not be dictated by others. But at the end of the day, I always go back to, will I regret it if I stop? Will I regret it if I don't do it? And if the answer is yes, you will regret it, then that's my sign to do it. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are talking about 2024 ins and outs out finance edition. So I have been seeing this in and out trend on TikTok and social media in general. It's essentially a list of the things that you are bringing in and putting energy into in 2024 versus the things that you are letting go of and no longer doing. And a lot of the lists that I saw were around lifestyle choices and things like that. But I wanted to do a finance edition because this is a personal finance channel. So I woke up today feeling inspired. So I decided to make a list and I feel like I've got a good one that I want to share with you guys. So the first thing on the list is budgeting and tracking your spending. If you are not already doing this, please, please, please let this be the year to do it. It is so important to know where your money is going, what you're spending on, because it allows you to know if you're spending on the right categories and the right places. Sometimes we kind of get into this habit of just swiping your card or tapping your card or doing Apple Pay and at the end of the month you see a really big bill for your credit card or you start thinking where did my money go it is so important to make sure that you are budgeting and tracking your spending I use a budget tracker that I check in on almost every single day if not every single day I log all of my expenses I input everything that I spend on and at the end of the month I look at the full spreadsheet to make sure that I stuck to my budget that I set for the beginning of the month so I would say this is step one if you're not already doing this please please do so you don't need a fancy budget tracker you can actually use pen or paper or you can go on notion or anything even your notes app will work just make sure that you know where your money is going to on the other side of that I put under out using afterpay Klarna or any sort of like installment payment services these services got so big in 2019 and now they're kind of the standard almost every single online store now offers afterpay or Klarna or some sort of way to only pay a portion of that price right then and there and then you can pay the rest gradually I think this is actually a really good option if you maybe had an unexpected expense but if it's something that's like a material good that you really want or maybe you want something at Sephora or you just want to go shopping I don't actually think that this is a good idea for things that aren't budgeted for things that you don't actually really need and you want the thing now as opposed to waiting until you've saved up for it so it's almost kind of like wanting the instant gratification as opposed to saving up and waiting to make sure that you actually had the funds to pay for it this is something that I'm actively working on I am not perfect at this I have definitely used these services even in 2023 to buy stuff at an online store because I didn't want to pay the big price just yet and I knew that I could pay it gradually this is something that I am challenging myself to not not do in 2024. Back to the end sections, checking your bank accounts at least three times a week. This kind of ties back into like tracking and budgeting. So making sure that you are aware of what your balances are and you know where your account stands is very, very important, especially if you want to take your finances to the next level. If you are blindly just tapping your card away and not really knowing how much money you have in your bank account, it makes it seem like you can just spend on anything and buy things that you haven't actually budgeted for. On the flip side of this never checking your bank account is under the out section I think that some people sometimes might not like to look at their bank account because they don't like what they're seeing or they are afraid to see that they have less money in the bank I think that getting over that fear will actually take your finances to the next level because once you face the truth of your bank account and the situation that you're in that's how you move forward that's when you know you can take an actionable plan or step forward to where you want to go. So make sure that you are checking your bank account. I would say at least three times a week. I personally check it almost every single day, which might be a little bit too excessive for you. So I would say three times a week just to get started. The next thing that's in is abundance mindset. And next thing that's out is scarcity mindset. The abundance and the scarcity mindset is something that I have personally struggled with. I want to say in the last year or two years, it's something that I'm still kind of getting over. And I've learned a lot within myself of why I had a scarcity mindset. So I worked on this through therapy and also journaling and I realized that abundance mindset is actually just knowing that more will come. So whether you spend money or whether you give money or whatever, it's not like there's lack. It's not like it's never coming back to you. Abundance mindset to me is 
if I give something away, I know that it's gonna come back to me tenfold. I know that there are opportunities out there. I know that there is opportunities for everyone and everyone has a seat on the table as opposed to one person is winning. That means I'm not allowed to win. That's not the case. That is scarcity mindset. So in terms of finances, having an abundance mindset just means that there is more that is to come. It's not finite and everyone can have a piece of the pie. Next thing is investing in yourself. That's in and what's out is impulse spending on material goods that you don't really need. I'm not saying that you don't need to buy material goods. I am the type of person who will treat myself to something really nice, especially like luxury goods. I'm really into that every now and then when I feel like I deserve it, but making sure that you have budgeted for that and you're not just impulsively buying it because you saw it on a TikTok or you randomly saw someone wearing it and you're like, now I want that. What's in for me for this year is investing in yourself. The things that I want to invest in are things that will help develop myself and will allow me to learn skills. So through courses or through self-development books, I'm really into audiobooks because it allows me to take in the information but also still be doing something on the side whether that's like washing dishes or doing laundry like the efficiency of an audiobook I've read quite a few books in 2023 that have taught me so much and the knowledge that I've gained from it is priceless because they're things that I will forever carry on with me so I definitely think investing in self-development books or courses is in for this year what's in is starting a side hustle that you are passionate about and what's out is being afraid to start that side hustle because of your fear of being judged. I started my YouTube channel in March 2023 and it was something that I wanted to try for a very long time. I have been watching YouTube for many many years. I've always imagined myself as that YouTuber who is talking in front of the camera and it was something that I was afraid to start because I knew that people would make fun of me or people who knew me might judge me and I kind of just threw that out the window and I know it's not as easy as that. There was definitely so many years where I'm like oh I really want to do it. I really want to start it, but I'm afraid. And there just comes a point where you're like, why am I afraid? I always think of a future scenario where I'm in my deathbed and I think about not regretting the life that I've lived. We have one single life. And if you are too afraid to start that thing that you are so passionate about, you are going to regret that. So this is your sign. If you have ever wanted to start your side hustle and it's something that you're really passionate about, please, please do yourself a favor and do it because you don't want to be in your deathbed and regret that. And honestly, who cares if they do? It's your life. Your life should not be dictated by others. So that's kind of the mentality that I started off with with YouTube. And I did falter quite a bit. I took a pause. I had to sit down and be like, okay, what am I really doing with this? But at the end of the day, I always go back to, will I regret it? if I stop? Will I regret it if I don't do it? And if the answer is yes, you will regret it, then that's my sign to do it. So this is your sign. Please, please do and start it right now today. Okay, let's talk credit cards. What's in this year is using your credit cards to your advantage to get free flights or accommodations. And what's out is not paying off your credit card in full. Credit cards are very interesting and people will have a different relationship with credit cards depending on how they use it. I have a pretty good relationship with credit cards. I use my credit cards to my benefits. I've used it to buy myself and my partner flights to and from Paris. We did that last year and this year I'm also doing the same strategy where I want to collect points and use those points to pay for our trip to Europe this year. And I've saved so much money doing that. There are so many other benefits to credit cards. They have insurance, whether your trip gets canceled or your baggage gets lost. They also have a buyer's protection program, just so many things. Make sure you're reading up on the credit cards that you are looking into because that's very, very important. And I promise you, if you really do your research, you can use your credit cards to your benefit. And what's out is not paying off your credit card in full. Please make sure you're paying off your credit cards in full. I know that not everyone can do this. It will start to snowball and all of a sudden you can't pay the full amount and that's when interest hits and the way the compounding works is that it'll just add on and add on and add on. So this year make sure you are paying off your credit card in full completely. Next on the end list is paying yourself first always and what's out is paying your bills first before yourself. Paying yourself first is a discipline that everyone should have. I read this principle in a book called The Richest Man in Babylon and it's really stuck with me. Whether it is $10, $20, $100, however much, make sure that you are setting aside a certain amount for yourself, for your future self, and you save that money or you invest that money first before you do anything else with your paycheck. The way that I do this is I always have a set amount every single paycheck. I take out $200 for my emergency fund and $200 for my investing account, and those are my non-negotiables. I have to pay those two things first before I even do anything with my money. That builds the habit, the consistency that you are paying yourself first you are prioritizing yourself and if you're thinking well I don't have enough money for bills you will figure it out 
prioritize yourself first and whatever is left that's how much you play with and if that's not enough then maybe that's a sign for you to maybe do a side hustle or maybe try to increase your income here and there so I'm confident that you can figure that out but make sure that you are paying yourself first whether it's a small amount whether it's a big amount whatever it is do that first before you do anything with your paycheck this one is for my Canadian girlies so opening up an FHSA is in this year if you want to start investing on your future self if you want to buy a home someday I use the FHSA account which is the first home savings account that was first introduced last year to buy my first condo here in Vancouver BC contributed eight thousand dollars into that account and it is also tax deductible so there are just so many benefits into opening up an FHSA so I would highly suggest you do that now if you haven't already and you start putting money into that account what's out is putting off setting aside money for your future self next time there is no next time today is the day for you to start putting money into your future self you can put that into an investing account on RRSB and FHSA an emergency fund there are so many options and the best thing about it is time is working to your benefit so if you start now if you start early then you can use that time to your benefit to grow your investments okay we've made it to the end of the list the last thing that I'll say is what's in is moving your emergency fund into a high yield savings account and what's out is keeping your emergency fund in a regular savings account in your bank I recently moved my savings account into Wealth Simple because they are the ones who are giving me the highest interest rate, which is currently at 4% right now. And in the past, I only earned like 0.1, 0.2, something crazy with my bank at CIBC. So if you haven't already done so, take your savings and put it in an account that is earning more interest for you. This is free money that they give you every single month for storing your emergency fund or your savings in there. So make sure that you are utilizing that to your advantage. That is it. Those are all of my ins and outs for 2024. Let me know what you guys think and let me know if I missed anything and put them in the comments down below. Let's help each other out become rich and financially savvy in 2024. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps support the channel and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.